Welcome back. Today we're working on a 2015 Terex 4. I'm replacing my battery for about the fourth time. I've had this unit since 2015. Of course, it does have some added accessories. I've got a fuse panel up here that powers front and rear light bars, uh, powers a amp, a receiver, four speakers, also some rock lights underneath the fender wells and some party lights that you probably can't see. Anyway, so what's apparently happening is we have some parasitic loss. So I'm gonna add a uh, Perco switch from Amazon. One of these guys right here, what it'll do is it'll isolate the, uh, the battery from all the accessories when you just turn it on and off, kind of like what you see on a lot of boats and marine applications. This one's from Amazon. It's a Nylite brand. It's about 15 bucks. But anyway, what I've decided to do, I'll show you where I'm going to mount it in a minute. But anyway, you take one large cable. I got a eight gauge uh, utility battery cable from AutoZone, about six foot long. Of course, I had to add some larger eyelets than what it came with. It came with these here. Anyway, soldered them in place. But you'll take one and uh, go from your positive battery uh, terminal to one side of the switch. And then you'll take the other side of the switch and you'll run another cable to your original battery cable. And of course, I've got my other accessories tied into that, the uh, eyelets for those as well. So they'll all be tied into there. And hopefully that will uh, solve my parasitic loss. If I don't keep it on a trickle charger, uh, at least once a month it goes bad. And of course, these smaller batteries, they can't go down too often without uh, calling it quits. So anyway, what I've decided to do is I'm gonna add it right here on top of the fan shroud. I was gonna do it on the interior, but I'm just gonna do it here and make it a little bit easier. I've already got my holes pre-drilled. I've got my four mounting holes plus the the holes that will go through the uh, to the switch. And I've decided to do it that way instead of with the side panel, which I think it'll just look a little bit cleaner instead of the wires coming out the side. So I've taken the uh, eyelets, I've heated on my Benham and all that, so they will go straight through that. It'll be a little cleaner look. But anyway, uh, gonna get started on it and start putting it all together and I'll show you the completed project. All right, we've mounted it here. I just have to put the fasteners through the four holes there. Routed our wire back through here. We're gonna have one again hooked up to our original positive battery uh, cable. And then you can see the additional accessory leads there as well. And uh, so that's what this one will be. And then this one here, which I'm gonna cut down to length, that'll go directly to the battery, the positive battery terminal. And that'll be your master on off switch. All right, so we've got our primary um, vehicle positive cable hooked up to the Perco switch. It goes around up to there. Got all my other accessories installed. I'm gonna tuck that out the way with a zip tie. And now we have the other end of the Perco switch. It's gonna connect to the positive terminal of the battery. And I'm gonna hook the negative up. There it is on that side and we'll be in business. All right, folks, we're wrapping it all up. I'm gonna come back, do a little bit better job here on that terminal end. Both of those there, put some uh, shrink wrap on there. So anyway, uh, we'll do a quick test on a voltmeter here. So I've got the Perco to the on position. So we ought to be getting at least 12, 12 and a half volts, depending on the, uh, the battery let me get this set up all right let's see what we have again the perco switch is on the on position you can still see that i hope all right there we go and again, that's, I've got the uh, negative lead of the voltmeter on the negative terminal of the battery and the positive lead on the primary um, positive cable to the machine along with all the accessories. 
So now we're gonna come over here, switch it to off. And it's gonna bleed down. That, possibly there's a resistor or something that's a, holding the voltage for a little bit, but that'll bleed all the way down to zero. And hopefully, hopefully what'll happen there is we will stop having to constantly put this thing on charge about every month or so. Now, one could, if one had more time, you know, I'm sure I've got a residual or a, a parasitic uh, voltage uh, drain, obviously. I could try to backtrack that, but with all the accessories and as old as this machine is, you know, I just don't really feel like doing that. So if uh, hopefully this works, if it doesn't, then that's where I'll be is I'll be backtracking a voltage loss. Anyway, thanks for watching Texas Patriot Off-Road and Outdoors. I'm gonna get this old girl back on the road and running. It's been a while. KRX has been taking up a little bit of the, uh, the time with it. So I think she's ready to go again. She needs a little bit of trail time, I believe. It's been a good machine. Had a bevel gear issue. That's on my video, on my channel as well. If you want to follow that, quite a few videos on the engine teardown and replacement of the uh, bevel gear nut. Anyway, again, thanks for watching Texas Patriot Off-Road and Outdoors.